Here's a not so secret secret. I have two kids under three and I'm not hopping all over the world with my toddlers in tow. I mean, I do, but I'm not just doing it as much as I used to. Other YouTubers live and breathe this stuff. So I called on three of them to nerd out with me and share their best travel and credit card tips with you. Credit cards could save you money. If you use them properly, they will save you money. Every time I used a debit card, I felt like I was just wasting money in a sense, right? I can at least get 2% back on all these purchases. So it's really kind of opened up my world to travel while still allowing me to kind of like prioritize my, my saving process and my everyday finances. With inflation driving up travel costs by an estimated 29% for flights since 2021 and 17% for hotels since 2019, Many Americans, myself included, are still excited to travel this year. More than half plan to travel as much, if not more, than last year, with many planning to go further for longer. According to Going.com, revenge travel continues with over 80% agreeing that travel is highly important or critical to their happiness. Gone over to uh, France and London, um, Portugal, all within the past you know six months or so. Uh, earned quite a bit of points and redeemed that, I believe, when I've tracked everything, it's now somewhere over forty or $50,000 worth of travel. I remember I made a video last year totaling up the amount that I earned, and it was roughly about $25,000. Last year, November 2023, I went to Japan two times, and I flew business class. If I were to have paid cash, it would have been maybe $20,000 for those four flights. I paid under $1,000. Most of us won't be sipping champagne in business class, largely because 58% of rewards travelers use their points towards economy flights. That going.com survey that I mentioned earlier, I read that flight deals are dictating the destination. So nearly two thirds, 62% of respondents said that they choose destinations because they found a good deal. They're almost reverse engineering their travel plans. So I asked Spencer, Daniel, and Chase to share advice on how to maximize rewards and get the best deals at any price point. A big part of the airline transferring process is what's called alliances. So maybe you wanna fly American Airlines, you'll see that American Airlines does not transfer directly with Chase Points. But American Airlines is a part of what's called One World Alliance. So if you find other transfer partners that Chase works with, including British Airways, who's also part of One World Alliance, if there's certain American Airlines award seats that are available, you can actually book those with British Airways. So you have to kind of learn these alliances and what airlines are in those alliances, and that really helps with the whole process. So as far as like domestic airlines in the US, we have American Airlines in One World Alliance, United Airlines, that's in Star Alliance, and then Delta is in what's called Sky Team. So there's different international airlines that are a part of these alliances, and once you learn that process, you can do some award searches, and then you might be able to find better deals by booking through those international airlines instead of the domestic ones. I guess when it comes to flight redemptions, you have to do a lot of backtracking. So I knew I wanted to go to Japan. I knew I wanted to fly on ANA. So from there, I have to figure out, okay, which credit card points can I use to get me there using you know those two criteria. So I used Chase points, sent it to Virgin, bought the flights through Virgin, the ANA flight through Virgin, the time the transfer bonus was I was going to receive 30% more points when I transferred it from Chase to Virgin. So I basically got those points on sale. And that's how I ended up with some pretty good value, good redemptions. At this point, you know, I'm, I'm only two years out of college and so are my friends. So everybody dispersed and they're all in different states. So I've taken a lot of trips, even just from, I live in the Austin, Texas area. I go out to Denver a lot because I have a buddy that lives out there and that's a very, you know, nonstop Southwest flight that anybody can book and that's what I do all the time. So for me, it's kind of just honestly like more local than anything. And, but that's kind of the beauty of the credit card game to me is that it fits everybody's travel habits, right? Trying to make those memories happen for as close to free as possible. And you can do that on any trip that you take really. Traveling for free sounds great, but it isn't really free. Travel rewards are just that, they're rewards. You have to qualify and you have to spend a lot of money on multiple credit cards to earn big points and redeem them. And some cards carry annual fees that you also have to consider as well. One of the first rules of getting into the credit card game is you must know how to use a credit card responsibly, paying it on time, paying it in full, don't carry debt. Because no matter what you do after that, right? If you get yourself in debt, it's not worth it. All these free flights, points, doesn't make sense, doesn't add up if you're paying interest on your credit cards. And there's a lot of people that pretend like they know what their spending habits are, um, but really once you actually get to the tracking part of things, you might be surprised with what you find. That was definitely the case with me. Um, I was like shocked at how much I was spending on certain things. You have to use your credit cards like they are a debit card. So I've never overspent to hit a bonus and 
while that might sound crazy considering a lot of you know welcome offers out there require eight ten thousand dollars worth of spend in three months like that's a lot for somebody my age that doesn't spend that much money um my only responsibility is really myself and my dog and we, we don't spend that much money in three months um but there are ways to leverage purchases that you would be making already like your rent for example or prepaying bills and stuff like that let's not ignore the elephant in the room there are a lot of people on YouTube who advise against credit cards and you need to use them responsibly. I'm not gonna tell anyone how to live their life. I'm not gonna, you know, really force them, hard push them onto using something that they don't wanna use. But I would highly advise them to do more research, look into credit cards, because on top of these points, you know, cash back, rewards, credit cards also provide that extra layer between you and your bank account. One of the biggest ones is gonna be fraud protection. And that's maybe one that most people don't really think about, but it's one that I, I come back to a lot because whenever you are using a credit card, you are leveraging the bank's money. You're not leveraging your money until you pay off that credit card bill. But if you have something like a debit card that you're using for every purchase, that's tied directly to your bank account. So if somebody gets a hold of that, they can drain your funds. It's really hard to get that money back sometimes. With a credit card, you just report the transaction as fraudulent. They give you the money back. If they have good customer service, they'll give it back basically right away. Or that I had a family member last year who uh, I think he was using his debit card and and for whatever reason, uh, that information got out. And be before he knew it, he was missing $20,000. I think the bank he was he was banking with missed a few like test transactions that this this criminal was using. Uh, and eventually those test transactions turned into a $20,000 PayPal withdrawal. And that $20,000 was just missing from his bank account for a solid like three or four weeks. He got the money back, but that caused a lot of stress because there's bills that needed to be paid. Um, and all that could have been really avoided uh, with just using credit cards. And to a certain degree, we can all agree that if you can't manage your finances responsibly and pay your balance off in full every month, a credit card might not be the best financial tool for you right now. But if you're looking to get started or want to optimize the cards you hold for travel, here are some tips. Before you apply for your first credit card, I would recommend taking a look at maybe your first three cards that you want to have and then kind of putting it on a timeline. Like I'm going to apply for this card first, this card second, this card third, and really taking your time to figure out if that card is going to be right for you. Because this goes for anywhere or any time you're on the credit card journey is making sure that the credit card fits your lifestyle and not, you know, you're just trying to get it because someone's talking about it or your benefits look really cool and you might use it. One of the most popular credit cards out there that these days a lot of people are kind of talking down on has been probably my most used card just because it covers all of my food purchases. But it is one that I'm considering closing this year because I don't think it's actually meant for me. I don't think I'm the tar target demographic for that card. And I think that is a big issue in the credit card space in general is people applying for cards that aren't really for them. And me and my fiance kind of run like we call it a two player credit card strategy. So uh, she's in the game now and we can kind of combine our credit card points. And then, you know, we like to travel together. You don't want to be holding points for too long. Essentially what airlines and hotel programs and even credit card issuers can do is they can devalue points over time. So it's not like a, a savings account. You're not like earning interest on these points. They're just sitting there. And if you're not using them, just like real dollars, they're kind of losing value to inflation, but it's like points inflation. I think of any airline or hotel credit card as being part of a separate setup, not your core credit card setup necessarily, but like a benefits setup. They do definitely serve their place, especially for somebody that's frequenting one company a lot. But if not, I would, I would consider transferable currency credit cards first. It's like you're basically converting your big umbrella of points into a smaller, like specific company's uh, point currency, and that's where you get the most value. You definitely can make up your money or break even on annual fees, which you should. But not only that, you could receive positive value to make it even more worth it to help you save money and experience things that you may have never experienced before because you didn't want to pay for it. I'm probably someone more similar to you are than I am to these experts. It's not my hobby to maximize credit card points. So my first takeaway is be strategic. What I learned from these videos is that you can actually transfer points to get better deals. So some creators gave examples of how you can transfer credit card points from a certain credit card to a certain hotel chain to get sometimes even 2x the points. Number two is don't force it, okay? Use these credit cards on things you would have used them for in the first place. So some people were very creative. They used it to pay tuition. They used it to pay rent. 
time. They use it to buy certain things that they would have bought anyway. Don't go outside the box and start spending like crazy and buying things you don't need just to get these bonuses or earn these points. And then number three, the most important takeaway in my opinion, uh, because I do you know preach personal finance and being somewhat debt averse on certain things, is to treat them like cash, okay? If you can't pay these things off that week, that day, that month, do not use them because it's going to start to snowball and you're going to wake up one day and see a huge balance in your credit card that you may or may not be able to pay off. So I would treat them almost like a debit card or like cash and pay them off often and frequently. So hopefully you learned something from this video. I know I did. These creators were super insightful and I got a ton of value just from it being able to interview them. Please visit their channels. Give them a shout out. Tell them you found us through NerdWallet. Thank you so much and have a prosperous day.